Hello, everyone. Welcome to A Cheerful Heart and Home. Today, we are going to be talking about saving for the holidays, making sure that you have a budget for the holidays so that you're not stressed out and come January, you are not in debt, which is super important. So, Thankfully, my dear friend, Dr. Lynn Richardson, who is a fantastic financial expert, has agreed to come here and chat with us about everything and make sure that we are in line and we are ready for the holidays and we are not by any means in debt when it comes January 1st. Hi, Lynn. Thank you so much for being here. Hi, Debbie. Thank you so much for having me. Always a pleasure to be here to share tips about how we can get money smart. All right, let's get right into it. So what can we do now, starting right now, to make sure that come you know, December 1st, we are not stressed out thinking, oh my gosh, how are we gonna budget for this month? So this is how we can get started. If you fail to plan, then you are planning to fail. So I say plan for this. Start with the 10, 10, 30, 50 worksheet. Basically, you take every single paycheck, the first 10% you give. Um, I tithe to my church. I like to give. I believe that good givers are great getters. The next 10% you save, um, preferably in a 401k. If you don't have a 401k, look into starting your own IRA, but make sure you're putting away 10% so that you also have money for your emergency fund. The next 30% is for incidentals like groceries, gas, hair, nails. If it doesn't fit, get rid of it. And the reason I say put away 30% is so you can have control over that. Nobody wants to go to the grocery store for toothpaste and walk out with $139 worth of stuff you don't need and did not budget for. And the remaining 50% stays in your checking account, a separate account for your bills. So your mortgage, your rent, your car note, your insurance, all of those things. That's the first thing you want to do. You want to get some control so you can see what's happening with your money. The second thing you want to do is take a look at the 30% that you have for incidentals. Try to minimize that spending as much as possible. And if you have anything left over, then take that money, put it into a separate account for your holiday spending. Now you've got your holiday spending set aside. It did not interfere with your long-term goals. It did not interfere with your bills. And you can breathe and say, this is my plan. The last thing you want to do is now take the 10, 10, 30, 50 Christmas worksheet. And then you split the money up as it's indicated on your worksheet. And guess what? When the money's gone, it's gone. Don't go into your bill money. Don't go into your savings money. Don't go into your giving money unless you decide that for this holiday season, your giving goes along with your holiday spending. But I think with that plan, we can all rest assured that we can enjoy the holidays and not be financially stressed about it. So what are some things then would you say that we can cut back on that really won't make a big difference in our lives right now, but that will help us for the holidays? Well, one of the things that we can cut back on is the amount of money we are spending on food uh, and the amount of money that we're spending on food that has a delivery bill attached to it. If you spend $20 on your meal and $10 on the delivery for that meal and you do that 10 times, that's $300 a month. Yeah. That's $3,600 a year. You also want to take a look at how much you are spending on gas. Gasoline, we know, is very expensive. Can that meeting take place uh, virtually? Um, can that meeting be postponed? Can that uh, event be consolidated? Can you carpool? So I would say meals, gasoline, um, and, and some of those other expenses like uh, those subscriptions that we're not using. Take a look at those subscriptions. And most people will find if you go into those three areas, you can save a lot of cash for the holidays and beyond. Now, when we do spend money, you always say, do not use a credit card. Cash is king. Cash is king, yes, if you have no control over your spending. But if you can exercise some discipline, then I do recommend that you use a card that you already have and take advantage of the cash back benefits. But here's what you don't do. Do not go out and apply for new credit now. This is not the time to apply for new credit just to support a holiday spending budget. That's right. Dr. Lynn, this is just the tip of the iceberg. You were so fantastic. I could talk to you all day long and feel like, I mean, you, your, your wisdom is endless. As a matter of fact, if you guys want more of Dr. Lynn's wisdom, you can get her book, which is called Symphony. The Symphony, it's incredible, right? 
Yes, yes. One of the other things that I like to talk about all the time, because everybody needs extra cash. You need multiple streams of income. Why? Because one stream of income is hazardous to your wealth. The pandemic and the quarantine taught us that. So look at different ways to get some extra money. What skills do you have? What are you passionate about? Maybe you can pick up some extra shifts at your job. Maybe you can decide uh, to go and pick up a whole new uh, career or another opportunity altogether. In my book, The Symphony, A Guide to Creating and Balancing Multiple Streams of Income, I teach you how to do just that so you can get more money in your pocket for the holidays, but also for the entire year. We love you, Dr. Lynn. Thank you so much for being here. And thank you for always shedding your wisdom on us. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Go to asklynn.org if you have any questions. Thank you. What is Lynn?